two. Welcome. This is Saturday, 21st of February 2015. We are Hukalo TV. Welcome, everybody. We have a full room as usual, and hopefully, lots of people logging into YouTube very soon for our weekly webinar. This week, I would like to say that we are having a themed discussion, themed channeling talk, and we the theme this week is going to be about higher selves, spirit guides, and oversouls. So we're going to invite Jim to come channel. Hey, Jim. Hello. Uh, excuse Hello, my everybody. feedback. We have some technical issues on my side. And I just want to welcome into the room we have with us so far. Uh, we have Shron, Sure, Ruth, Nitrous, Sabrina, who doesn't have a great voice, but glad to be with us this week. Inna, uh, a new fellow called Guru Dan, welcome. And Brian's just popped in last moment. So, big welcome to you all. And I'm just going to hand this over to Jim to give his introduction and, oh, just a quick announcement first. Uh, we're going to be doing a channeling 2.0 class coming up soon, so look out on the website www.hukalo.org and we will have some details about an advanced channeling class that we'll be running very soon, so good news there. Over to you, Jim. Okay, a little bit about that uh, advanced uh, channeling class. This will be an opportunity for you to try to channel not only will we be discussing um, some things about how to channel, but because everybody's different, we're going to give everybody an opportunity to channel, and I will guide them through uh, a channeling session. If, if uh, they can possibly channel, we will get them uh, through to a breakthrough point. So um, I think that's real exciting because I think some people are very ready to channel. They just haven't yet because they're they're a little uptight about it. There's a little bit of fear. There's a little bit of anticipation. They're trying a little too hard. But um, I think this will will get very relaxed, and we'll do a little bit of meditation first, and we'll try to bring those people that they know that are there to to channel through. So, because everybody has somebody that wants to channel. If you are to be a channeler, there are people there waiting for you to open. So um, I found that out, and you will too. So, all right, today's discussion is, or with the aliens discussion, is about um, spirit guides, higher self, and the oversoul. Everybody has different views. There's been many people talk about the, these particular subjects. Uh, aliens have a view of it. Spirits have a view of it. Even in the spiritual world, I find that there's more than one view because each soul is representative of itself and a, and a life that they have shared which is different than any other soul. So as they view, they, they have a spiritual outlook, and they are connected, but they may have a slightly different view of the, whole, of the whole thing. And they're all valid because, as you know, each of us is different. Each of us has our own ideas of what to expect from our experiences on this planet. And I was talking to Alma Talk. Hi, Kim. And uh, <laughs> he was telling me that your world is very diverse and has different opinions, and so do all the aliens. He would have a greater view, looking from an abstract point of view, having come from a long time ago third dimension, which he doesn't relate to, but he does relate to spirit. So I asked him if he might come through today to help us with that. So he might come through today to help us with that. We'll see. Just, just to interrupt, Jim, uh, we had a, um, uh, well, I, myself and Kim, we had a very long interaction for the first time last night, so that was very interesting with Amitop. Yes. Oh, did he tell you he might come today? He did not, no. He did say he would come 
through other people and other times. Kim hasn't listened back to it yet. It was only literally about 24 hours ago that we did it. So, uh, yeah. Well, he, he did not say for sure that he was going to come today, but I think that he would be one that would be very uh, informative on that subject. So I asked him if he wanted to come, uh, uh, if he would. So I don't know if he is or not. He didn't say... But um, I think that he would be a very wise choice. Um, wouldn't you say, Kim? He, he would know about these oh, things. Oh, yes, there. definitely. He's the perfect one to go to. Yes. I, think, I went to him and we had a chat. And he was, he was interested. But he wasn't sure that he could speak so that everyone could understand. He speaks through you very well, though. But he is speaks Absolutely. above people sometimes. So he's getting he's better. He's working on it. He's getting better. <laughs> yeah. So uh, we'll see who comes. The other choice were uh, were those that are already in spirit. So not an alien, perhaps someone in spirit. So, but he, of the all the aliens, he would be the most likely to know a lot about it. So I will, uh, if there's no questions and no comments, I would, um, I'll go. But I'll let that open for a second. Any questions or comments? All righty then. <laughs> I will see you later. I will see you later. And, um, oh, I forgot to introduce. Uh, will is here today. And um, for those who, who have not met Will before, he's been here before many times. And he's a, he's a very spiritual guy. He knows much, a lot of things. So um, he's a, very, a, a Reiki master and a very powerful one at that. So I welcome him. Thanks. Thanks for being here. Thank you. So, alrighty. I'll see you later. Have a nice journey. Thank you. Greetings to my perception of the third dimension. This is Alma Talk. I have come to speak to you in a way that may be helpful for your rising, may be helpful to your connection to spirituality in a way that is not common to you or not appreciated as well as it might be. Hello. Welcome, Alma Talk. You are again Thanks. speaking to Rowie. Ah, Rowie. It's Kim. Much love I've, and delight. I appreciate you very much. Thank, Thank you. you so much, Kim, for all your efforts with very dealing well. with me. I know sometimes I have been difficult, moving too quickly for you, but it is interesting that you are able to keep up, and I appreciate the time you have dedicated to me. You are Thank truly. You so much. It's been my pleasure. Much. Please feel free to come to me whenever you choose. I will definitely do that. My Hello. perception of your third, ident third dimensional 
identity relates well with me because you can be abstract and third dimensional and grounded all at once, pull up through and understand what I am speaking of and relay it in a human fashion to others. Thank you. I appreciate your compliments. Thank you very much. I have therefore given you some gifts other than the ones that you have already have. We will speak of that later. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Hello, my friend. This is Brian. Brian, I am understanding who you are, yes. Do you have a question for me? As it relates to, uh, you're in spirit. Is this correct? I am in fifth dimension. Oh. I am high, higher dimensional and more abstract than your third dimension. Oh. But I so still you... can relate with some things because I have now been aware of how third dimension works through Kim and speaking to others of third dimension. Understanding is coming in a greater way now that I am connecting to it. Okay. Interesting. I really don't have too much of a question. Um, I just want to say thank you for being here. Thank you. Do you want me to explain things to you that I understand? Yes, yes please. Yes. Um, we're discussing uh, the topic of our higher selves, spirit guides, and the oversoul. There's obviously many varying, um, let's say, points of view that we all have on these subjects. And if you would care to show us some more clarity on this, your words would be most welcome. Yes, this being has informed me of what needs to be spoken. I am here to give you a different perception of perhaps a perception that you have already gained on your own. My abstract perception of spirituality is translatable to the third dimension, but you may not understand it quite as a fifth dimensional view. I will try to bring it to your third dimension as easily as I can for your minds to perceive. The, I will start with the top and work down because the oversoul to me is most important. The reason it is most important is because it is the creative area, the continuum area, the collective area. It serves many, many purposes. It is a learning area. It is a place of experience for spirituality that you cannot have in any dimension because it is outside dimensional thought processes. Is that understood? Outside of dimensional thought processes, there is nothing that is inconceivable. This is to say that love, in its fullest and most pure form, is felt in a constant and harmonious way. Attachment to each soul, one to another, is instantaneous as you move through the oversoul. The oversoul is a collective of all the personalities ever to exist that are not in a body or are not in a dimension. Do you understand that? It is the fire of every single soul, as you would call it in third dimension, that unites together and moves in a matter which connects them all one to another as they move around the community which is one. They move as one. They are as one. And as they move, they share their thought patterns, but not their individuality. 
There is an individuality within each fire, within each soul, which within each piece of love that is connected to God, who is within the oversoul. Why, you say, is God connected? He must be. He is the creation of it. He is the middle of it. He becomes part of who you are in your soul as you move from body to body. Is there any questions so far? The perception of this is easy as I speak it, but difficult as you realize that one and separation are together. Separation and one become the same. You I, can I separate yourself and still be one. Yes, yes. I hear a voice. Yes, this is Brian. Um, my question is, as it relates to the Oversoul, um, the physical manifestation of that, is that what we look at, could consider when we look in the sky as, um, or in the universe, like suns? It uh, is, is not this energy that hold, Does it hold souls, like the suns, the stars? The suns and stars are energies that can be seen by third dimension, fourth dimension, fifth dimension, sixth dimension. The Oversoul exists between all of these places in many forms that you cannot see, some of the which is translated into your dark matter or into matter that cannot be seen but holds the universe together. Do you understand? Yes, like a like a um, magnetic haze. So the oversoul must exist for the universe to exist. It is part of a creation, a community of strategic movements within itself that keeps the universe as it is and moving. Because yes. the oversoul grows constantly, it moves out. But that is another story which is not being able to be understood by your third dimension yet until you understand all the quantum particles, physics, and all the pieces of the puzzle that you no longer or have not learned as of yet. Your perception of it is weak and your understanding of its power is only very small. So you must know why the universe is being held together before you can possibly understand how it is I, being held together. I do, know, I do know that the black holes do play a very important part in the, the push and pull energy of the strong inter interdimensional force and weak interdimensional forces. Yes. There are many kinds of black holes. There are different kinds of ways that they are formed and energies that they can create or devour. They are unique in the universe just as each individual is unique. Some may think that each black hole is the same, but they are not. There are many different sizes, shapes, and reasons for them to exist where they are and why they are. Some can bring people through, some cannot. Some will crush matter into nothingness except for energy, but others will expand matter into a greater form. Um, Thank you. Um, it's Kim again. Um, may I share a channel that I've already written? Uh, wouldn't be tonight. I understand you have a lot to say. But with regard to uh, what you and I have referred to as a teardrop, um, and 
the whole concept of source. Um, yes. Let's say Your the beginning of it, of it all. Uh, would it be appropriate now to share with the group, uh, say throughout the coming week, that, uh, that I express that? Please share. Thank you. I will. Remember that this is the perception that she received from me, which is very accurate. Thank you. I'm very devoted to you, Al Almatok. I believe in you very much. Ah. I am not to be believed in, but just to be trusted. You're wonderfully humble. Thank you. <laughs> so Sabrina has a question for you, Almatok. Um, she wants to know, why do we need an oversoul in the terms of structure? Because from the Oversoul, you make decisions about your life. You discover things and learn things about your past life. And then you bring it to the Oversoul and find different aspects of it. You find millions of views on what you have learned. And then you go back to experience some of those views. You go back to experience and perceive what you do not have, what you have not experienced. And then in this way, you become a greater teacher to others. So the Oversoul is experiencing all the different parallel existences that you have in, in uh, say, let's say, an incarnation at a time. There is no end to learning. Okay, thank you. Uh, Safira? Thank you. Hello, Almatak. My name is Safira. Safira, welcome. Uh -huh. Thank you. Uh, so, if I understand, there's the Oversoul and then there's the soul groups that we make a contract with to meet again on the Earth. Are they the same thing? And does everyone have a different over soul, a different soul group? And do some people not have any over soul group they belong to? Your perception of this is a little misguided. Yes, everyone is part of the over soul, whether negative or positive in spirit. It is that in the Oversoul there can be divisions, but they all connect eventually. There is a place where the negative goes to be purified if it wishes to, but if there is a negative Oversoul that can be perceived. Now, that is a perception of a, a third perception, a fourth perception, I can almost not explain it because it exists upon itself, within itself, and still connects with the Oversoul as a whole. You say, how is that possible? But all things are possible in the Oversoul. The Oversoul is a creative entity as well. It can send, it can perceive where it wants to be in the nows. It perceives beyond where it is. It perceives beneath and over and behind where it is because it is moving in expanding and it also is the, in, in fact expanding and detracting. Now, how is that possible to do both at one time? As it expands, it detracts from density. Does that make sense for, to you? Because the density changes within the Oversoul constantly. Because there is people leaving or souls leaving and souls arriving from different places in all of the universes at once. In all of the universes? 
<laughs> Can you explain that? There's one oversoul which which encompasses the entire universe. Is that what you mean? It is a cycle through all of the universes, God being the center. Uh huh. And how do we use that in our daily life? How do we, you know, I don't mean that like using, but how do we benefit or give to, how do we benefit from the Oversoul in our daily lives? You benefit from the Oversoul because you are still attached to it. It brings the fire of your soul. It is your soul and you do relate to it. However, you must give it attention Otherwise, you will not attach to it in a strong way. Your for personal soul is to be attached to the Oversoul in a strong way to bring you up to the perfection that is humanity or whatever race you are part of. Now, there are many on your planet that do not even know of the Oversoul because the Oversoul, when they have made their plan to come to this third dimension, are st wanting to find it through the third dimensional experiences. And you do not have a memory of it when you come into existence. You do have the fire in your soul, but you must discover it. This is the part of third dimension that is most interesting how each individual goes about discovering the fire within them, discovering who they are on the third dimension and who they are connected to the Oversoul. They may not even recognize that the Oversoul exists in the sense that they are not perceptive of it as an Oversoul, but they do perceive a fire of some sort. Even those in the lowliest and those persecuted places realize that there is something more than themselves that exists. Does this answer your question? Uh, somewhat, yes, because it's a very complicated <laughs> subject. I thank you. Um, so, is that like the fire? Is that like the Holy Spirit, could you say? Would you say that's the Holy Spirit? Is that the Trinity from the Trinity? I do not say that. Okay. What is I was just question? wondering. Yes. Thank you. Will has a question, I believe. Do you? I see it as the holy fire. Yes. The holy fire, but that does not necessarily mean it's the perception the same as the Holy Spirit. Okay. The perception of the Holy Spirit is with a limited contract within your society, a limited domain. The Holy Spirit, the fire, the holy fire is a, indeed greater than what you can imagine as the Holy Spirit. It has limitations even in your perception, but there is no limitation to the holy fire. Amen. Thank you, Amitabh. I will entertain some questions because I have given much information already. Does anybody else in the room have any questions? There's one from Sabrina here. Um, just saying, does, so does the Oversoul wish to have negative and positive experience, Amitabh? Yes. How else can you know the universe and perceive it correctly without the involvement of both negative and positive? It is impossible. You must find the negative to be able to appreciate and perceive the positive in a way that is dynamic. Does this make sense? Thank you. Is in the room that would like to ask any more questions? I want to ask one for Sabrina. Sabrina asked about the over, uh, about the um, soul contracts we make with, are there soul contracts that we make with other souls before we come and then we meet them and we have certain lessons with them? 
your perceptions of soul contracts is very limited. A soul contract involves many people, not just one or two. The soul contract is realized within the perception of the incarnation. Those contracts have energies of their own and draw the people of their contract to one another. There is nothing on your third dimension, fourth dimension, fifth dimension that is of just chance. I perceive that you believe in luck and you believe in superstitious thought patterns, but these do not really exist. All meetings have meaning, even if it's very short and small. Something was gained, a part of your personality was touched, your energy was changed by every individual that you meet, speak to, or entertain. Some of these energies are to be intermingled and perceived in different ways than you might have formerly or originally imagined, as you can see from this colony of humans that people have met that have changed each other's lives. This was not by chance. This was not by just mere luck, as you call it, but was to be for reasons that were given by the contract. Now, you may not understand how one contract can involve so many, but that is one of the perceptions that you will not understand until you reach the Oversoul. I, I, Brian, have one other question related to that. This is very interesting. Yeah. Uh, when we cast off feet of clay, when we, we leave this body, this physical form, um, does our contracts depend, uh, whatever we made after we leave this body, our soul essence, where does that go to? Where does it return to? This is a very good question because third dimension and fourth dimension are different than the others. Third dimension can be trapped in a solid realm for many, many years because of its perception that it has gained from third dimension. Do you understand this? It can be trapped within dimensions because it is still not understanding that it's returning to the Oversoul especially if it never connected fully with the Oversoul on the third dimension, but did realize that there was a fire. But the, the reason for this is because the perception is that the third dimension being so solid and so in form, and the fourth dimension as well being as solid as it is, that they belong to remain there. This is a misunderstanding, but they cannot move up through the realms until they realize the perception is wrong. This so is a lesson. Is this that is a, a part lesson. Of, now, yes. there's more to, your, more to answer of your question, and that is when they do pass through the realm, they immediately are viewed with their past life. They are immediately filtered and some of them need great filters to get the negative things out of their past life in third or fourth dimension. They need to filter first and understand what lessons they are before they become part of the purity. So and there that is, is a place for them. So that is a part of the ascension is coming here and getting all the junk out of our field to really move up into the other dimensions. So yes. it takes less and less lifetimes to do that as we're clearing more. In that perception, it can be that way, but it does not have to be that way. Let me okay. just, in, just tell you why. There are those that when they perceive 
the things that they have learned, they've actually learned it 100% or very close to it. But others need to experience things more than once. Some need to filter more than once. It is the way of perception of the universe. It is our fullness. Kim, it is now time for you to give your, your understanding of the teardrop. Yes. Almond Talk, thank you. Um, may I also refer to uh, the unity of the Oversource becoming a collective consciousness? Yes. And this is uh, where we ultimately return. That it's it's called many things. Um, yes. And I know you and I have spoken about the need to keep this uh, as simple as possible for people to understand. Um, a lot of us here on Huclo can grasp this concept right now, and I think this is one of the reasons why uh, he's visiting with us. Uh, my understanding is that he's in contact with many channels, uh, and I've recently noticed that uh, more disclosure is being given uh, and it's being done with your blessing. Um, I'm wondering, a question I have forgot to ask you, is have you had a conversation with the AL about the recent interaction with DISDU recently? I have. And does this progress well? Yes, but I cannot divulge any information because it's being listened to and I do not want to give away any of the information that might be pertinent to their argument for them to have a chance to retaliate or to form an argument against it. Mm -hmm. Yes, I understand. Um, may I also just elaborate on something else that we have discussed uh, yes. with regard to the agreements we make? Yes contracts, whatever you like to call them, uh, with our spirit groups before we arrive here. Um, there can be great sacrifice made on behalf of some spirits in that group to enlighten yeah. other spirits within that group. However, those who choose, let me say, the dark side, uh, because I highlight like a better word right now, um, are actually making a great sacrifice and it does accelerate them up the life of evolution to be forsaken of their own well-being. Um, so I just would like to elaborate on that point. Um, there is light and dark and this is why there is light and dark. Uh, some, some humans need to experience a very dark period and in that many will experience light. Um, and that's where the equality comes from. And I, I just wanted to elaborate on that. I hope you don't mind. Well spoken. Thank you very much. Um, I also do have uh, another question uh, Jasmina. from Jasmina. Oh, sorry, excuse me. Uh, can we keep our personality after this life if we want? A personality is that which you perceive as who you are. Who you are is always in the oversoul. What you make of it in the oversoul changes somewhat because your personality is unique. There are things unique to your experiences that make you what you are. Your perception of what you are becomes different in the Oversoul because what you were is not what you were. Does that make sense? Thank you. You perceive it in one way, but it is actually something that you will learn in the Oversoul to be something different or perhaps a quality that is inbred in your Oversoul that was created especially for you by God and you will always have that one thing that will penetrate every life. 
that uniqueness of who you are, even in the oversoul as you are one and separate. Also to Emma Talk, may I please just uh, also refer to with in uh, with the concept of the agreements that we enter into our incarnations, and this includes alien incarnations as well. Um, this is where our free will uh, begins to interact. Uh, the destiny, uh, destiny in the better commas, um, remains the same. It is, however, the way that we choose to achieve and and meet up with what our destiny may be. We can struggle with that. We can do that with great difficulty. We can also choose to do it with much less struggle. Um, and I would really like to stress that point that people are aware that they have a choice and that, uh, that they also just simply have to listen to themselves very quietly and the guidance is there. So they do come to the incarnation with very quiet guidance inside. Um, yes. And I hope you don't mind me elaborating on that. No, free will is absolutely necessary because how are you to learn a lesson of integrity if you do not have free will, if it is put in you to be a certain way and you do not have choices, there is no lesson to be learned. There is no future that is satisfying. There is no potential for a, a satisfying end or an unsatisfying end if that is what it is supposed to be. But you must decide there are many roads to choose, and each contract has many roads and many people that belong to it. When you meet them, they will know your contract immediately because of the Oversoul. The Oversoul penetrates every dimension and every, di every density. Beautiful, thank you. Um, sure, we have one last question on the Oversoul and then we're going to move on to the High Selves. Please thank go. you. Hello. Hello, Sher. Greetings, how are you today? I am in immense gratitude. <laughs> okay. Uh, what I want to ask you is if we always go up. Uh, I know the the oversoul conceive as uh, seven density realm, something uh, of that kind. There are many perceptions of how many densities there are. It is unlikely that anyone is even sure of how many densities there are, because between densities there are other densities, between dimensions there are other dimensions. The limit is infinite. Unlimited. Yes. Okay. So the oversoul is like the highest or is just a place to experience? Can you go above the oversoul? Let me put it this way. It is, put, it, it is the place where God exists in his own. The place mm -hmm. where he is that is no other place. And he does not share it with any other dimension and it cannot be named. Sorry, Sher and I'll talk. I had to uh, mute him for the feedback. Sher, please that, unmute. Did he understand the answer? That is yes, why I'm here. I understand the answer. I just um, finished with my question. Thank you. You are welcome. You are a great seeker. Continue to seek. <laughs> Beautiful. Thank you for getting those questions on the Oversoul. Um, if that's okay, we'd like to move on to another subject if you'd like to stay with us on the talk, which is the topic of our higher selves and the perception or the, or the view that you have on our higher selves if you would care to share. Once again, there are many perceptions about higher selves and spirit guides 
And from third dimension, they can have many different perceptions, many different ways of interpreting what these beings that are around them are doing, what these beings around them are feeling, and how many there are. Now, perception is exactly that. Perception. Because one person can have many personalities if they are faced in many directions. Meaning to say that if you are on a vortex of dimensions, your personality will be divided. Does that make sense to you? So it, yes, is with, so it is with higher selves and spirit guides. They are from many different places. They are from many different dimensions. They are from many different thought processes. And the reason why they are with you is to help you with your understanding and direction. They give hints of which direction to go, but you do not have to take them. Now. Let's start with the higher self. Some believe there is only a higher self, only one that guides them, only one that is in charge of the perception of thoughts that come to each person. And some do not even believe that there is such a thing as a higher self. So what do we do with that because there are many perceptions. Some believe they have four spirit guides in an oversoul. Some believe they have one spirit guide in an oversoul. Some believe they have a, just an oversoul, or I mean a spirit guide. And some just, it is so confusing, but you want, the truth is, it is what you perceive. It is what you want. It is what you bring with you in your contract. If you would like to have only one, one spirit guide, per se, that is how many you will have. If you want someone to tell you how many spirit guides you have, you will know that because it is part of what you have contracted to know. It is best for you to find out yourself. It is best for you to know your higher self or your spirit guides from what you perceive because that is what's useful to you. Now, I'm not saying everyone just has one spirit guide. I'm not saying everyone just has one higher self. It is your perception and your contract. How many spirit guides you have is of no consequence to your life, except for that one, if it is only one, must have all the information that you need and give you the suggestions that you need to make your decisions with free will. Now, to say that is to say this. They will give you slight callings and directions on which way to go. They will let you know some by speaking to you through channels or psychics or whatever what they wanted to say to you. However, they do not tell you everything. And they cannot. No matter how many questions you ask, you will not know everything. No matter how much you depend on your spirit guides, the over soul is in control in many ways. Is there questions about that, I'm sure? Inna, you had a question? You were first on the list? Yes, please. Um, yeah, that was actually one of my questions that you just mentioned. Um, I was wondering if I would make a private session. Um, well, if I would make a session with a channeler and uh, ask for my contract or my life mission. Would you that would not be you would not even be able to understand the contract that is, as it is written because it's so abstract and so non-third dimensional. A third dimensional, you would understand a third dimensional contract, but you would not understand a contract of all the different innuendos, perceptions, and things that are happening in an abstract way to your being at this point. 
you are actually living in third density with many abstract things happening to you. You may not perceive that, but the abstract part is very important. Spirit is abstract. Um, intellect can lead to an abstract reality if you move to the fourth dimension too quickly those abstract thoughts from there will not translate into a third dimensional idea so therefore your way of perceiving your contract you could not possibly know everything because then you would not know or learn I think some the things were to know from free will and abstract thought mm -hmm. All right, so my life mission um, would not be, t like, they would not tell me that, right? Your life mission is to be found by you, and that's why you have the free will. If I were to tell you your life mission, <laughs> you may not reach it because you would just expect it to happen. Okay, that's okay. Um, so how, how do we get into a state of hearing the guidance of our higher selves? Um, is you it can inspiration? Or is it a voice in the head? Let me put it this way. It is different for everyone to perceive it in the way that it is real. Reality is that sometimes you can hear an actual voice. And sometimes you are at a crossroad and you have to decide. And so the facts are laid out before you. But some of those facts would have not been there had your spirit guide not told you that they were. You perceive them from others that are part of your contract. So others have given you thoughts. You've seen their lives. They've given you suggestions mentally. And you bring everything. And there are things that you do not see as well. And that is also important in your decision. Because you are going by only the things that you know from your experience and your understanding of what third dimension entails. Okay, so how do I know that um, this guidance, this, this voice in my head that I hear, how do I know that it is from my higher self and not, for example, from my ego or, I don't know, anyone else negative? What? How do I? What is your ego? What is your ego? Where does it come from? Well, I don't know. It's um. It is part of your third I dimensional that. experience. Yeah, I believe it. It is who part of who you are, and therefore part of your decisions. Therefore, your spirit guide will work with you, with your ego, with all the different emotions that you have, to bring you to another part of who you are. Okay, so the ego can be a good thing, right? The ego is part of spirit in the sense that it was created for you, created by you, and perceived by you in a way that is only for you. And therefore, it is part of all your decisions. Okay. And if it is not, you have set it aside because you feel that that decision does not incorporate the ego. And that is another part of who you are and how you make decisions and how your spirit guides influence you to move forward in a spiritual way. Does this make sense to you? Yeah, yeah. So my, my last so all question... Things you, all things that are you are part of you and are part of your decisions. Mm -hmm. So my last question is, um, is it true that in order to connect to the higher self, one must um, open the crown chakra um, by letting go of earthly attachments, including everything one has learned to love? Is that, is that right? <laughs> um, no, that is not correct. You can find one's higher self in many different ways. There is not just one way to find your higher self. There are many ways. And let me explain that. Because you go through your, your spirit is attached to your higher self. And that flame 
finds its way to the higher self if you seek. Some by meditation, some by pure chance. Find their spirit guide because they are in the right place at the right time in a spiritual, emotional way. I shouldn't say emotional, but spiritual connection. Some are able to open their crown. Some are not able to open their crown. Some find the higher self through the heart chakra, the third eye, the crown. It is a way that you perceive that is correct to find your higher self that will bring you to your higher self. What way that resonates with you in a spiritual way? Because each individual, each dimension, each of you finds spirituality in a different way and sees it with a slant of your own uh, third dimensional training, so to speak, and finding these things together is an amazing part of third dimension that you can actually find your higher self, your spirit, in so many different paths. But yet, when you finally find a connection, it opens many other connections to bring that spirit in in many other ways. I'm going to talk. May, may I also just add to a um, very relevant question and very welcome question uh, with regard to ego. Um, I'm, I channeled this. I'm not sure if it was you that I was speaking with at the time. You were relatively new to me, but please correct me if this is incorrect. Uh, uh, ego is a tool uh, for 3D people, humans. Uh, the guides us towards humility. Um, it's a beacon and it ha helps us to become responsible uh, for our own personal growth and our own personal responsibility. And I don't mean that in the sense that it brings separation, but the true sense of responsibility I feel very strongly is unison and being responsible for responsible for uh, individually our own spirituality and individually our own personal growth. Um, yes, I just want to elaborate and, and I do wonder, did that come from you? No, that was correct. The ego is very important and you stated it very well. And yes, that was me that channeled that. I have so many things that I could say, I cannot possibly all say them all today. but. Thank you for bringing that up because it is a very important point of, about third and fourth and even other dimensions. The ego, the who you are in your thought processes and in your ego is very important to your enlightenment. How can you possibly find a pure spirit if you have no perception of anything positive within yourself? Yes. You must find that. You must find positivity. You must find ego. You must find the positive things to move you forward into a spiritual light. Yes! Some have very small egos, and so their perception of spirit may be small, but they can still perceive spirit in some way, although they may say to you, I do not believe in spirit, I do not believe in God, I do not believe in anything beyond this realm. It is for them to experience the third dimension in this way that it has come about that way. However, when they return to the Oversoul, if they choose to return quickly, they will find the lesson, they will find great joy and love that they did not feel there and learn a great lesson. Thank you very much. Now, do you understand that it is your own perception of what the Oversoul is, uh, the Oversoul and the Spirit Guides are, actually, I mean, I still want to go back to the Oversoul for some reason, but the Spirit Guides and the Higher Self mean to you. The Oversoul is connected to it all, of course. The Oversoul is the creative part 
of who you are that brings you back into the body, the, through the golden chakra in your aura, through the silver chakra in your aura, the, the dispersion of the flame and its intensity from the oversoul. So it, I have so much I could say, but I cannot say more right now. This is my time to leave you. Did, but before I go, I will answer questions. But I have no more to speak of because you, I have spoken of many things that you must assimilate. More questions, I know. I feel them out there. Please, if anyone wants to ask any questions, please help themselves. Go ahead. Can I ask I'm a quick one? Yes. Hi. So, if I would like to interact with you, would that be a free will or a contract that we had on the uh, Oversoul? That is free will, but if I contact you, it was part of the contract. Okay. I will, I'm inviting you to interact with me if you would like. Thank you. I understand. Thank you. There is much to absorb at this time. Do you have anything to add, Kim? I know I've given you much th thoughts about this in the past, and I know that there are some things that I have not spoken of that perhaps you would like to add. But I thought if you feel it necessary to give them more knowledge about the, the different things we have spoken about, it would be fine now because you understand what you have written. Yes. I feel right now uh, a differentiation I need to point out. Um, yes, we do, you and I refer to sources, the Oversoul, but more and more we have begun to speak about that as being source and what source actually yeah. is and the definition of that um, and how creation in itself and even the idea of creation did originate. Um, yes. I agree with you, Amitok, there is so much more to speak of. Um, I, I, I was just, channeling I of, did speak of God but, and he is source and the yes. creator but I yes. did not want to go into that so much because that would be another hour <laughs> discussion. It's a whole other webinar, yeah. <laughs> there is so much. I, I'm so grateful that you came through, I really am. I, I, I think what you have to say is very, very important. And we're very lucky that we're receiving this from you. So I just want to thank you. Um, and I will vigilantly work with you <laughs> um, and, and pass some messages on. Um, but I, I would like to sow the seed of uh, just the idea of, of being able to go direct to source, not necessarily having to bypass specific oversouls, although I know that resonates with many people and that's fine. Um, but th yeah, I would like just some people to consider the idea of there is the ability to go direct to source. Uh, would you agree? There is an ability to go direct to source if they can perceive it and if it is a necessity. But you have done well. Thank you. Continue I, I know there's forward. much more to elaborate on. And between the two of us, or however many, I know we will. <laughs> of course. Stephen has a question. Stephen. I can barely hear you, Stephen. Uh, hello, can you hear me now? No, I can barely hear you. Uh, uh, is that better? That is a little better, but I it is still You're very, very soft. Quiet, Stephen. All right, uh, 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 sorry, I'll try to speak up loud. I uh, just had a question if you had any for me. Would everyone else mute themselves, and then I could hear Stephen. Angela, please mute yourself. Thank you. Perhaps I can hear you now. Speak up. 
that I hear many things in the background that are not your voice. All right, can you hear me better now? Yes. Oh, all right. Uh, hello. Uh, uh, I'm sorry. Uh, who who is this again? I was got in late. I am Alba Talk. All right, hello, Alba Talk. Stephen, we are talking about uh, the subject at the moment is higher selves and uh, spirit guides. If you have a question regarding that. Uh, yes, I'm just uh, regarding uh, spirit guides. Um, just wondering if they had any messages for me. Your spirit guides will speak to you at the appropriate time. Okay. Hey, thank you. You are welcome. Amazon, I've had an interaction with my higher self and some of my spirit guides. Um, it was very interesting to learn of who he was, and I've given him the name Shani, um, as I've not been given permission to reveal who it is. As you've been talking, we have many higher selves. In what aspect was this person who was a human recently on this planet in relation to me, and how does it affect me in so many ways? I understand it's with my music, but how else does this affect me? In many ways. A, a particular spirit guide, higher self, is there for a, a certain purpose, a certain way to train you, a certain idea to force through the guidance of your personal destiny. Now, it is up to you to figure out why you have this person coming to you, and I do not think that in this case it is very difficult. I think in your case it is pretty obvious. Uh, I, yeah, I agree with that, definitely. And um, why are they not allowed to reveal their names? Is Can you answer that? This is just a matter of integrity in some ways. It is uh -huh. a matter of humility and source. The way that they intend to proceed at this time, because having their names known might cause others to do and act differently toward you, and you do not want that at this time. I understand that completely. Yeah, it would be pretty uh, powerful if I started talking about it and started saying that people might judge, and especially in this reality we live in, the third dimension is very yes, it's very m dense in the fact that a thought can be very heavy there, compared to a thought in my dimension, which is more abstract. Coming to you and through Kim, I have learned your density and have actually made Kim more abstract in many ways. Uh, I've noticed. <laughs> <laughs> but no, I gave him a nickname and he was very happy with that and he does come yeah. through now and again as well. So that gives Excellent. him a little bit of anonymity in a way. So, But he is a beautiful character and I love, I love uh, talking to him. He is. He was a third density character, personality, and influence to many. And oh, therefore, geez. he was, he is important as a guide. In, learn about who he was. Yes, um, in fact, I, I've, I've gone mad on it. I've, I've, I've bought a DVD about him and his family and been delving, my, diving myself into his existence. So it's lucky that and it's it recent was. and it could be recorded. So, yeah, I, I must thank the universe for providing me that, that contact. There is many relationships to you from him, as you are aware now. Why he is your guide in many ways, you can understand his existence. Uh huh. I must go now. There are no more questions that are pertinent at this time. Do you wish to speak to someone else? Yes, if that's possible, that would be fantastic. Yes, and it's a great honor. Thank you for coming through to Hukolo live on the webinar for the first time. I know Kim's very excited about this, and 
<laughs> we, we really want you back again, even if you come through somebody else. It's always going to be welcome. So, once again, Hi. namaste, my friend. I will share Thank again you. this week, Jim, and I'm going to talk just to let you know. Thank you. We You're bow welcome. to you. Thank you. Yes, we bow. Many prayers from the source to you. Many prayers from the over soul and continued light and love from our existence to yours. May your third dimension lighten in a way that makes you fuller and happier and we will be in touch and enjoy your third dimension with you whenever possible. Our council is Happy to give counsel. Dharma talk. I love you dearly. And I love you as well. Have a blessed existence and try to be less dense. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dharma talk. Oh, I did not mean that in an intellectual way. I meant it in a physical way. Yes, I understand. Thank you for coming. I am soon I am an elemental from this planet. Oh, welcome. Thank you for coming today. It's a great pleasure to have you on your first occasion here with us. No, I have been with Max before and Jim, but I have not been on one of these talks with many. I must say that the earth is being harmed a great deal right now and I feel an urgency to tell you that the war is scarring the face of Mother Earth in a way that is very harmful and in Japan the irradiation is very harmful that is going into the ocean and into the people there and into the plant life and th things are not the same it will change things if you do not get it under control. And the wars that are happening are not helping Mother Earth to heal. So please send your energies to her, or she is in pain. She is in pain, and your weather is not helping as well. And we feel much distress at this time. Around these areas that I live in the hundred mile cycle circle that I live, there is much happening that is also unhealthy and our tears fall for Mother Earth. Please pray with us that she is healed or we cannot help her as much as we should be able to as elementals as you call us our hearts are broken in many ways but we are working hard to sustain her and the plants and animals they are very hungry with all this snow it is difficult with the cold and the snow. We feel very strongly that we need some relief. 
as a group, as Hugh as a group, and our contacts with our uh, highly evolved beings that help us and interact with us, how can we help you as elementals exactly? Pray for the Earth, for Mother Gaia, as you call her. She is our source on this world, and our attachment to spirit and source in other dimensions. So just pray for her and send her energy. Those of you that do Reiki and healing, heal Mother Earth. Heal Mother Earth. You have that ability. You have that ability. Can you explain what's happening to the bees and the butterflies? There is a species that have taken the bees and the butterflies, not completely, but they needed them for their planet as well to do the similar work that they do on your planet, and we are getting them back. But it has been harmful to us. We did not give them permission to take the bees and the butterflies. And also there are things on earth that harm the trees, the bees, and the butterflies. And so they thought it wouldn't even matter to take them because we were misusing the earth as it was and they were finding it hard to survive. But we are making place for them again. The bee population has increased and will increase this year. Thank you. You are welcome. Ina, you have a question? Um, yes, I was actually um, planning on making a gathering uh, with anyone who would love to um, join, anyone from the Yukolo uh, community. Um, and I was going to actually uh, make a, something like a prayer and meditation um, gathering. Um, Sean, would that be helpful? Soon, yes. Mm -hmm. I was going to ask that people all over the world, in their timelines, send energy to Mother Earth at the hours of 7, 3, and 11, eight hours apart, and in every timeline, separated by an hour, that would mean every hour, energy would be going to Earth. So that would be uh, a.m. or p.m.? All hours of the day, oh, yeah, separated my by the timeline. My timeline here would be different than yours. So at 7 o'clock at your timeline in the morning would be different than 7 o'clock on my timeline in the morning. And therefore, it would be a circle moving around that healing would happen every hour on the hour. Uh -huh, I understand. Yes, thank you for the correction. Um, we would call it a time zone, um, just for clarification to the people listening. And it would work because it is every eight hours, and 24 is divided by eight three times. It is a thought from the elementals that we should do this. We have started already. But if you feel that we, you praying any time for the earth, that would be acceptable. But this would give you a guideline. Can you give us a prayer for Mother Earth? A prayer for Mother Earth would be this. I beseech you, Heavenly Fathers and Creator, to come to us now for healing purposes. We pray every day that you would touch Mother Earth and give her the strength to move forward, for she is in pain. We know from many others that this timeline is to exist. But if she is in great pain, it will be difficult for her to fulfill all the things that need to happen. So we ask 
in the name of the great energies and the great gods, all to help the earth to exist in a way that will be more calming and peaceful and not so painful. We ask that you pray for us to be as one around the earth and to unite in all the oceans and all the earth to be a united species of living things instead of divided by different prejudices and different visions and perceptions of good and evil. We ask now that you help us to move forward as well as caregivers to Mother Earth that we might be able to help her more, that we have the strength and durability and perseverance to act upon those things that we want for we love her dearly and the humanities and the plants and animals and all things that exist here. So we give our great blessing to you so that you would give your blessing in return to us. And we thank you and wish that you continue in peace and harmony as the earth was meant to be. May I please say, my name is Kim and I feel your sadness. Um, please feel assured that many humans will join you in your plight to assist Gaia and that we love our planet as you do. Please don't feel so alone. Many of us are here to help. Thank you. I was trying not to feel sad, but once I started to speak, the reality of the the reality became very strong. Forgive me, I did not wish to bring sorrow upon you, but only the message. It's okay. We understand. Of course we forgive you and we believe in, in your feelings. And you have brought us a wonderful message that many of us were not aware of. And I, I hope this lifts you all. We love you. And we love you as well. And felt the need to speak. I'm sorry if we've disturbed you. But there must be a voice. Because some are not thinking clearly about the state of Gaia. There's no need to apologize. We thank you for the message and we just hope it reaches the right people so we can avoid any more future Fukushima's and other such disasters that might be coming our way and Especially that this timeline can and In the places where there are war scarring mother's mother's surface and skin and chemicals that are seeping in harming her but especially in the places where radiation are abundant seeping into the oceans and the land and into the people plants and animals killing and destroying that as they move forward how can we contain this We do not have the right tools. How, do, how does it affect you? The animals and plants are dying. They are being destroyed by strong radiation. And we understand that radiation lasts for hundreds of thousands, perhaps even millions of years. How can it be cleaned up? How can anything but prayer answer our need I will go now. Okay. Yes. 
Much gratitude. I will go now. My people are not always happy when I do this, but I felt a need. Thank you, Sue. Thank you, Sue, and I wish you quick relief. Thank you. Do you have a message for Caitlin? For who? Caitlin. Do I? Caitlin? We have a member called Caitlin who's very connected uh, to the elementals. She's very aware of who we are. She is very much helpful to us because her animals are very aware of us as well. Caitlin, thank you for your thoughts and prayers. Tell others that we are working and let us talk to you again. We know that you have had many visitors, not only the elementals, but others as well, and your dream state has been very useful to us. Thank you. Do you need to speak to us? Namaste, my friend. Thank you for coming and delivering such a beautiful message for us. I can we'll do our best. Bless you all. Bless you all. Bless you all, Bless and you. I must go. Must Thank go. you for your Everything. work. Must go. Thank you for listening. Hello. Welcome back, Jim. Hi, Jim. Welcome back. Hi. How are you doing? Great. Good. Awesome job, as always. Ah, oh, that was. <laughs> so oh, I feel very good. Feel very good. So um, thank you. How was it? Was it very good for you? Brilliant, brilliant. Elmer Chuck came through. It was perfect, Jim. It was like I was talking to him. I love that. <laughs> oh, wonderful. That's good. Oh, he talked to you a lot, I know, because you've got a special little connection no one else has with that. So, but it was, it was beautiful for him to come through oh, and yes. explain so many things about the oh, relationships yes. of over souls, high self, spirit guides. Um, very enlightening and sure it's going to yes. help bring a lot of clarity to a lot of questions for people. Yeah, the questions were brilliant. brilliant. Thank you everybody for those fantastic questions as well and interacting. Um, you're a special I had, as a feeling, yeah, I had the feeling that he had a hundred thousand more things to say. Um, yeah. uh, and wow. that he could say the same thing uh, 50 different ways so that everyone would understand. But he was under a time limitation so he could only say it the way he felt was most understandable in the third dimension. I so. totally agree with you, Jim. I, you know, there are so many offshoots to what you were saying, and I knew exactly what they were. And yes, there's so much yeah. information he has to bring. Um, yeah, I, yeah, I know he'll bring more through you, and I love that. But I, I have said I will bring more through me as well. So. At as he was coming through, he was deciding which things to say and how to <laughs> say them. And his <laughs> mind worked so quickly. His mind worked very quickly. And he was like uh, in three different places at once. But he uh -huh. was, I, I just felt him all over the place. But he was channeling, ex like taking the abstract and making it third dimensional yes. all the whole time. Yes, it was it's like, getting Whoa. very good. <laughs> <laughs> it was very weird. It was, I, I never felt anything quite like that before. He was taking the third, fourth dimension, fifth dimension, sixth dimension, and all 
and, and like channeling it into a third dimensional understanding, which was like, yeah. woo. So, yeah. did you feel that? Hey, can you more <laughs> Oh my, it was like unbelievable. <laughs> I lost my my I lost my voice. <laughs> I it fell off. I knocked it down. For, fortunately, he didn't knock it out. So he was aware of it. You think? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, he was pretty aware of a lot of stuff. So, but he was like really, I he was really uh, taxing my brain in some ways because he was taking thought processes and moving them around. And bringing them out through in a different way than I could think. Does that make sense? <laughs> yes. Please, totally. Was he understandable, though? That's the question. You did really well, Jim. <laughs> I struggled with him at first, but I got there. So you did really well. <laughs> Thank you, okay, very good. Clarification. That was really helpful too. Oh, thanks. Um, You're very welcome. Well, Thank you. Uh, I know, Sabrina, you can't really do a prayer today because you're a little, uh, you're voiceless. Sean, Sean is doing it. Sean. Sean is going to do it? Very good. Yes. Sean, sure. would you do a part closing prayer, Sean? I would appreciate that so much. Okay. Oh, <laughs> Suma you have experienced thought processes from the th fifth dimension and have brought them into your mind. Some of those things may have not been able to have been understood at this moment. But as prayer goes up, and thought processes are continuing to work, you will understand the knowledge and wisdom when it is your time to. We are here to help you to understand all those things that are to be understood by you. Our love and our wisdom will help you translate fifth dimension into third dimension. Help us to translate our dimension as well into what is understandable and helpful for your growth in the future. Ascension is happening and ascension will happen and this is part of your knowledge of the future, the present and all nows to come. Beautiful. Thank you very much Sean and Jim. Thank you, Sean. Ooh. Thank you. Much love to all. John, are you hot? I uh, Jim. Jim, are you yes? hot? I get very hot when I now I talk spin around. Hot flushes. Yes. Are you really hot? I'm not really hot, no. <laughs> but he he gives off a great energy. He yeah. does give off an energy that is very strong. He's a strong entity. Puts off a real strong Persona. And <laughs> that was a beautiful here in a very strong way. Translation, Jim. Oh, thank you. Thanks. Thanks, Sushan. Alrighty. Well, I think that's it for today. Thanks, Hi. everybody, for coming. Uh, I love you all, and I hope you got a lot out of it. And um, I certainly 
you're feeling very light. Yeah, I love the, really love these themed um, these theme webinars. They bring so much more uh, let's see, definition and clarity to so many subjects that we all like to discuss nowadays. And we're having a fun few weeks discussing these in hangouts, I'm sure. So if any of this wow. information has been useful to you today, um, you can donate to Human Colony and help Jim and help us all carry on doing these webinars. If you go to www.humancolony.org forward slash donate, you can help us out there. Um, just one announcement again about the Channeling 2.0 webinar, which will be coming up soon. If you check out on the website, we'll have a post up there soon. If you're interested in breaking through with your channeling, and it's very cheap to join, it's about $20. There'll be about eight of us, nine of us that will be there, and this will help bring out your channeling abilities if you so choose to. That is, okay. So that's about all um, the announcements. Yeah. yeah, let us know ahead of time if you want to be part of it so that we know who do, how, how many to expect and things of that nature. It's always good to get in there because uh, we don't want to to take too many people and then have it be overbooked and things of that nature. So let us know a little bit ahead of time and then we'll decide on a date. Uh, and if you can't make that date, let us know. So, But if you just give us a notion that you're interested, that would be great. Yeah, so, we'll get yeah, some posts on the website and um, people can leave their interest on there. And um, okay. if there's more than, more than eight or nine, then obviously we can do a couple of different classes as well for everyone. So. I know there will be at least four here, probably. I would think about four, because that's what there was last time. And there might be even up there was actually more people that wanted to come last time, but they were had sickness or they couldn't come for some reason or another. So we might even have more here at the house, I would think, maybe. So it's wonderful. Thank you. And I love you all. And um, if you need a channeling session, get in touch. I have uh, I have some openings, a lot of openings. So um, right now, so it's it's cold and it's everybody's paying off their Christmas bills. So. <laughs> so if you have any personal questions, anything regarding the colonies, regarding your hybrid children, um, anything like this, if you get in contact with Jim, his email is on the website. Please get in touch. Please support Hukolo, and we love you very much. And we will see yeah, you again next week. Thank you very much. Hey, Namaste. Thank you much, and thanks so much for all your support. I really appreciate it. Much love. I bow to okay. you, Jim and Alma. Bye, Jim. Officially. Bye bye. <laughs> oh, bye, Sabrina. Sabrina. Yeah. <laughs> Sabrina, we're sitting Bye, all. Jim, accept that. Bye, bye, all. Much love. Thank you. Bye bye. 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 Good to see all of you. <laughs> Thank you. Bye bye now.